Good afternoon. We're so glad that you're able to join us for this great conversation about investing in Puerto Rico. Uh, my name is Robert Miller. I'm the uh, CEO of Invest Puerto Rico. We are the island's investment uh, promotion agency. We're focused on bringing quality jobs and investment to the island and uh, promoting the island around the world as a destination location. Um, we're glad to have such a distinguished co- uh, panel uh, to have a conversation around what investing in Puerto Rico really means. Uh, here we are, we're joined by our distinguished governor, uh, Governor Pedro Pier- Pierluisi. Governor Pierluisi took office in January of 2021. He previously served as Puerto Rico's Secretary of Justice, Resident Commissioner of Puerto Rico in the U.S. House of Representatives, and in the private sector as an attorney in some of Puerto Rico's top firms. We're also joined by Christian Gonzalez, who is the co-founder and CEO of Wovenware. After working for IBM and Motorola, Christian, a native of Puerto Rico, uh, founded Wovenware, an artificial intelligence and software development consultancy. They serve clients with sophisticated technology across the U.S. and internationally from Puerto Rico. Uh, uh, Wovenware has been named to Inc. 5000's uh, fastest growing companies for five years in a row. So we're glad to have Christian with us. Welcome, Christian. Um, Additionally, we have Robert Salcedo, who is the founder and president of Biosimilar and Biosciences Corp. Uh, Robert has held leadership positions in companies such as Amgen and Mylan before found, founding Biosciences Corp, a consulting company focused on biologists, bio, biologics. At the beginning of 2021, Robert, a 25-year industry veteran, established Biosimilar Solutions in Puerto Rico, developed Biosimilar's gene, cell, gene and cell therapy, as well as a COVID-19 oral and nasal vaccine. We're glad to be joined by the Honorable Governor Pierluisi, uh, Mr. Robert Salcedo, and Mr. Christian Gonzalez. With that, we're going to kick this off uh, with uh, with the governor sharing uh, some remarks regarding Puerto Rico and why, you know, the agenda of his administration and why investing in Puerto Rico makes sense. With that, the Honorable Governor Pierluisi. Thank you, Governor. Governor, it's in your court. Hello, uh, good evening. Good evening to you all. Um, I see Roderick is somewhere, but I, I, I don't see him. I, I see he's connected, but uh, I think it's a good idea if uh, Roderick uh, um, gives us the welcome or welcomes us all, all, all. Are you around, Roderick? Governor, can you hear me? I actually just gave a welcome and, and shared some comments uh, uh, about you, your background, and a few other things. And I see you perfectly and, and the other three folks, but I don't know. Looks like you may not be able to see or hear me. Can you hear me, Governor? I'm not sure. Well, perhaps per, per, if he if he doesn't the hear me. The executive know, director of Invest Puerto Rico is um, on the line. Please, uh, let's reach out to the governor's people so that but they know that we're here. I wonder if I should start addressing you. Please, please. Okay. Please. As, uh, okay, so I will. As um, most, if not all of you know, uh, I'm, I'm the governor of Puerto Rico. Um, I was elected just about two and a half months ago. Um, it is um, a great challenge. I have... Uh, uh, in, in governing Puerto Rico uh, now, uh, first and foremost, uh, given the pandemic, we still have um, uh, all over. Um, I have to say that I am uh, very positive about Puerto Rico's future, and I'll explain why, even with the pandemic. Um, First of all, as a matter of background, for those of you who are not that familiar with Puerto Rico, we are a U.S. territory. And as such, federal laws, that is U.S. laws, generally apply in Puerto Rico. Um, By the same token, federal agencies uh, are generally deployed deployed in Puerto Rico. Agencies such as, let's say, the FBI, uh, the Drug Enforcement Administration, U.S. Customs, 
um, banking laws, the FDIC, you know, covers uh, commercial banks in Puerto Rico. Why do I say all of this? Because that gives you stability, that gives you certainty, um, and it, it, it should uh, and it should also um, cause you to uh, be comfortable in investing in Puerto Rico. Uh, there's rule of law in Puerto Rico. There's due process in Puerto Rico. The U.S. Constitution generally applies, uh, and we. Have treated equally in all federal programs, and we do not have the same political rights our fellow citizens have in the states. But I would say to you that even though that's something I definitely want to fix, uh, in terms of deciding to invest in Puerto Rico, uh, um, you should um, realize that the political risk involved in Puerto Rico is quite low particularly when you compare us as an investment destination to any other investment destination, let's say in the Caribbean, Central America, even South America. Uh, in a way, we kind of compete with the states. And one thing that you should all also realize is that wages back the states and abroad. And I'm talking about professionals in the areas of science, technology, engineering, math, uh, it, you know, the, and, and, and so it shouldn't be surprising that we have a very vibrant manufacturing sector in Puerto Rico, actually very sophisticated. 45% um, uh, of the gross national product of Puerto Rico comes from the manufacturing sector. There is no country in the Western Hemisphere that can say that, including the United States at large. So, and our manufacturing sector has shown to be very resilient. Um, we went through a very devastating hurricane back in 2017, and we, um, we also got some earthquakes in the south of, of, of Puerto Rico in early 2020. And the pandemic since then, yet our manufacturing sector has been uh, producing. And when you look at its sales overall, they have been pretty, pretty stagnant, pretty, not stagnant, pretty stable. Uh, when you compare... Um, uh, let's say our neighboring islands in the Caribbean, when they get hit by hurricanes, they're devastated because they rely pretty much solely on tourism. We don't. Tourism is a very important sector of our economy. It, it has growth potential. But since we have this strong manufacturing sector that gives us uh, the kind of um, stability that you would want to have anywhere, um, the professionals I mentioned earn, by and large, about 30% less than their counterparts in the States. And um, one thing we can do as a U.S. territory is to give uh, ample tax incentives that make uh, investing in Puerto Rico a very attractive proposition. We have a law in Puerto Rico, we call it now Law 60, it's basically a code of incentives. I'm not a tax lawyer myself, but I'll try to summarize it in plain vanilla. Basically, it allows American companies to organize themselves as, that are organized as foreign controlled corporations to come into Puerto Rico. And if they decide to invest and operate in the manufacturing sector of our economy, in the tourism sector of our economy, in the agricultural sector of our economy, to pick three sectors, um, they will be paying, uh, in terms of local taxes, anywhere between income taxes, anywhere between zero and four percent. 
let's say 4%, if I want to be conservative talking to you. That is, and yet they, they, they wouldn't be paying the federal income taxes, uh, uh, U.S. corporations are uh, paying the mainland. And uh, the Trump uh, uh, tax reform does impose what's called the guilty tax on, uh, and, and they do pay federal taxes, but never as much as they would be paying if they do business in the mainland. Because in the mainland, by, in general terms, you have the federal income tax that the U.S. government imposes on corporations, plus whatever state taxes they need to face. In Puerto Rico, that's not the case. If you can organize yourself or your company as a foreign controlled corporation, um, energy costs in Puerto Rico are higher, are higher, uh, than in, than the U.S. mainland. They're comparable. They're lower, actually, than the energy costs in Hawaii, for example another island, actually a state of, of the union, um, but uh, they're higher than they should, I have to say. And we, so we are in the process of transforming our energy sector. Um, a P3, a public-private partnership, um, is underway in Puerto Rico, a consortium of very sophisticated a, a companies in the energy field will be taking over the management of the tra of the transmission and distribution of energy in Puerto Rico. And the purpose is to streamline and to make our power company much more efficient than it has and reliable than it has been in the past. Um, we have a very aggressive um, a public energy law in Puerto Rico regime. Uh, calling for uh, the use of renewable energy um, eh, ever more so. Uh, the renewable portfolio standard that our public energy public policy or uh, energy public policy law uh, sets forth, it basically requires that by year 2025, 40% of our energy come from renewable sources. So I, as governor, need to work on that and make sure we comply with it because that's the future. We have plenty of sun, we have some wind, and uh, and we have, again, the, the, the technology, access to the technology we need, the batteries, what have you, <clears throat> to rely as much as possible on renewable energy as opposed to <clears throat> oil, and fossil fuels. Um, LNG, we have used LNG in the past and we can continue using it, but it would be like a transition type energy. I say all of this because the goal is to uh, end up uh, uh, paying uh, obviously less than 20 cents per kilowatt hour, which for some of you doing business in the, in the States um, might be still costly, but the goal is to bring it down as much as possible. Other than that cost, uh, the cost of real estate in Puerto Rico is lower than in the mainland. And, and as I mentioned already, the cost of labor in Puerto Rico is lower than in the mainland. And we have great climate. Um, if you're engaged, for example, in the agriculture um, area, um, you can have, uh, I'm not an expert on this field, but you can probably have year-round crops here, two or three uh, seasons. And actually, that, that uh, could make us competitive in certain areas in that sector as well. The biopharma sector, the medical devices sector, the aeronautics sector in Puerto Rico are incredibly sophisticated. 12 of the top selling pharmaceutical products in the U.S. Are, e are either wholly manufactured or par partially manufactured in Puerto Rico. Uh, and in terms of um, a, a, the, the medical devices a, a companies doing business in Puerto Rico, we have seven of the top 10 medical devices in the, in, in the bio um, in the bio um, pharma area, we have companies such as Amgen, which has a lot of its production based in Puerto Rico. Uh, and I could invite any of you to go visit those facilities. Actually, at the end of the Trump administration, when this reshoring was being talked about, a delegation of White House and, 
and cabinet, you know, officials came to Puerto Rico and when they saw the kinds of facilities we have in the manufacturing area, they were in awe. They couldn't believe it. And, and so uh, uh, now that there's this interest in, in the U.S. to bring back a lot of the manufacturing that takes place abroad, Puerto Rico is definitely uh, part of the conversation because we have an ecosystem, uh, not only the, the companies themselves, we're used to dealing with all these companies, suppliers, consultants, and so on. Um, so I'm not gonna belabor this too much. Things, okay, things that I didn't mention that are, that are important as well. Recently, Puerto Rico got a, a waiver so that we can do, um, a, a, a basically have a waiver to handle international cargo and passengers um, in a way that states cannot do. Um, Alaska has a similar waiver, uh, but this, this could give us an edge in that area. We call it the air hub strategy. Another thing I did, and, and I didn't mention, we have a major international airport in San Juan and two other international airports in Aguadilla and Ponce with potential for growth. We have connecting flights with lots of U.S. cities and some connecting flights uh, with Europe. And strategically, we're located in a pretty much close to the equator and in, an, in a place that is actually when you, you measure this, closer to Europe than and Africa, actually, than any other place in, the, uh, in, the, in, in, in America. Um, and, and so that's why we keep talking about of Puerto Rico as a bridge, as a, bri a natural bridge between the U.S. and the rest of Latin America. And it could even, you can even think in terms of Europe and, and, and even Africa. No wonder we get hit by hurricanes. They, they originate actually most of them, if not all, in the African continent. And, and they end up hitting us uh, because we, again, are, are pretty much located there in the middle. Uh, we're open for business. My administration is going to be pro-business. I campaigned based on the promise that I would maximize the use of all this federal funding we have available to improve the infrastructure of Puerto Rico. Bear in mind that FEMA applies here, is deployed here the same way it acts in Florida, Texas, New York, when they get hit by hurricanes, floods, fires, what have you. Um, and the same with, the, with HUD, which has a program called CDBGDR, CDBG uh, MIT mitigation. And, and those programs are available to us. And you're talking about uh, roughly about $60 billion that still uh, could be getting to Puerto Rico for multiple purposes, improving our road system, improving our electrical grid, improving our water and sewer system, in, uh, providing safe housing and safe schools to our population, um, enhancing, revitalizing our inner cities. This is a lot of money. Bear in mind that our economy, that our, our, our national uh, uh, our GNP is about $70 billion. Think of, let's say, uh, to be very conservative, just think that for the next 10 years, Puerto Rico could have CapEx, $4 billion a year of, of, of a CapEx budget without having to float bonds and, and borrow it. We have it because of all these federal disaster programs that you have in the States. So the opportunity is there to improve the infrastructure of Puerto Rico, which would be like a great platform for the economic development that I see coming to our island. Our, best, our government will be facilitating business, streamlining our permitting process, and, um, and the way that I'm approaching my job, actually because of my background, is as a CEO. I have been able to recruit um, great talent for my cabinet. I have empowered them. I'm overseeing them, but I want them all to shine. And we are acting and we will act with a sense of urgency in making sure that we take advantage of all this federal funding, take advantage of all these federal laws that apply in Puerto Rico, use our tax incentives smartly and, and ignite our economy. Count on me. 
as governor, uh, open doors at La Fortaleza. We call the governor's mansion La Fortaleza. Uh, I am not an expert on lots of the things you do, but I'm conversant on economic and financial um, uh, uh, terms and, and matters. And, um, and, I am, and I know my way around in Washington. And that helps. So, so great to speak with you. And I'll answer any questions you have when the time comes for the panel discussion. Thank you so much, Governor. Uh, I will uh, uh, come back to you in just a moment. Hopefully, you can hear me okay at this at this point. Um, uh, with that, uh, I will, uh, Governor. Hopefully, you can hear me okay at this at this juncture. Uh, with that, I, I'm going to ask you one follow up question before we get into the question and answer period. And that follow-up question is simple. It's could you just speak to what you see as the biggest opportunity in the next uh, couple of years uh, as it relates to your administration? If there were a single win that was the big win, what would that be? I think, we may, I think the governor may not be able to hear me. Governor, do, do you hear me? Okay, if the governor doesn't hear me, we'll, we'll come back to him in just a moment. With that, I'll, 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 I'll start with you, Mr. Gonzalez. You're a native of Puerto Rico. Uh, you've got one of the fastest growing companies in the world. You're doing it all from Puerto Rico. How, why? Tell us a little bit more. Thank you, Rod. Um, well, I, I'm, we are on the software development and the artificial intelligence field. And as you know, those two fields are growing exponentially either because of COVID, but artificial intelligence is just uh, one of the, those new technologies that are uh, exploding around the world because of all the efficiencies and the the, the uh, help that it gives a lot of uh, uh, employees. Uh, we do a lot of computer vision uh, modeling and uh, we've been able to find all that uh, talent in Puerto Rico. As we started a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, um, uh, we started as a software development company doing integration and, and software development in general, but now uh, uh, we're completely focused on the artificial intelligence part. All that talent, me being part of, of the Puerto Rico community, I'm Puerto Rican, I was uh, I studied in uh, the engineering school in Mayaguez. Uh, uh, we know of all the great talent that comes out of Puerto Rico universities. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the main challenges a lot of years ago was, so where are the projects that we can, you know, uh, 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 use all this engineering talent in, right? So uh, I decided to establish uh, my company and make uh, uh, an effort to find all those opportunities and not only shine in the NASA and all this big companies, IBM and, and, and I, Microsoft, Twitter and Google, uh, but shine in Puerto Rico and have all those uh, uh, all those projects here. So um, we've been, I mean, we have a, around 150 employees, engineers, computer scientists, data scientists, and we've been doing all of that from, uh, from Puerto Rico. And I'm very, very, uh, uh, you know, proud of, of being able to do that from here. So I, I think it's a story about uh, all the talent that we have available. We have uh, a couple of engineering schools, computer science schools, you know, Rio Piedras, Bayamon, Mayagüez, uh, and uh, all the talent, you know, is available from here. So, uh, Chris, Christian, I, I want to follow up on that just a minute. You know, Puerto Rico is not normally the place of uh, people think of it. Happening tech ecosystems. It, it, it's, you know, people say, "Oh, Silicon Valley, New York, Boston." Know you know, those those are markets. Austin, maybe, uh, and or you know, maybe even Raleigh creeps in. What makes Puerto Rico's tech ecosystem exciting right now? Well, I mean, why compete? Why compete uh, on those markets when you have uh, uh, U.S. trained? Uh, citizens in Puerto Rico uh, with great engineering schools and, uh, 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 you know, Puerto Ricans tend to want to stay home, 
right? We we love being in Puerto Rico. I mean, who wouldn't want to work in Puerto Rico? We have all year all all year long summer, um, and we are part of the U.S. completely. Uh, so uh, for and now in COVID times, uh, it's even it's it's even better. You can be anywhere in the world and work from here. So, uh, 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 so uh, I mean, to me, it's a great opportunity to, you know, for uh, other uh, engineers all over the world just to come here. And I, and I see that opportunity and I'm, you know, I'm holding, uh, I'm doing all I can to make that happen. And we're growing, uh, we're growing. Uh, I, I hope we finish the year around 180 people, and uh, we'll grow even more by the end of next year. Uh, and, uh, and it's all from here. Right? That's great. Robert, Robert, I want to go, go to you now. I mean, Puerto Rico has a rich and deep history in manufacturing, a 50-, 60-year history. But gene and cell therapy, the stuff that you're doing is cutting edge, next generation, and you're bringing it here to the island. Why, why are you bringing it here to Puerto Rico? And what do you want to do in terms of being able to, to grow um, the company yeah, here at We've got some backup coming in from one line. There we go. Thank uh, you. Uh, Governor Prudelisi mentioned uh, about the top uh, pharmaceutical, com- pharmaceutical products that are manufactured in Puerto Rico. Um, and he talked about Amgen. My first experience in, in Puerto Rico was bringing Amgen here. I was the very first employee for Amgen and Juncos Puerto Rico. I was, it was a pleasure for me to, to do that work. I spent 10 years building the largest and most sophisticated biotechnology company in the planet. And then 90% of all of Amgen products go through Puerto Rico. So if an, a company like that trusts Puerto Rico, I say to myself, why I wouldn't trust that. Um, and then I think we're now in the next phase of innovation relative to, to ther- therapeutic uh, candidates and therapeutic uh, targets for cancer. Gene and cell therapy is, is, uh, is a direct um, evolution of biologics. And Puerto Rico already has thousands and thousands of people who have biologic experience. So why not come to Puerto Rico? Uh, and we have partnered with the organization Invest Puerto Rico to, to come here. And not only that, uh, we are bringing not only my company to do gene and cell therapy, we're bringing three additional partner companies that are coming to Puerto Rico. And um, we believe based on the track record, based on the talent, based on my personal experience and putting bringing Amgen from small, teeny company to where they are today. And Puerto Rico was the anchor for all of that. So I feel that now it's my time to build my own company, just like you, Governor. It's your time to run this place. It's my time to build uh, my own company. We plan to hire three or 400 people in the next phase. And just like uh, our fellow speaker, I'm going to take full advantage of the number uh, 10 engineering company on the planet, which happens to be one half an hour from my facility. So I'm going to be hiring all your people from my OS and taking advantage of some of the people I work with at, at Amgen, at Abbey, and having them help me generate the next the next thing. So um, Puerto Rico is a very uh, advantageous place to be. I'm close to home. I can fly anytime I want. Uh, I get to enjoy the uh, my family, extended family, and my wife is from Puerto Rico. I'm from the Dominican Republic, and I really want to uh, emphasize that the reason I'm here is because of the business-friendly nature and the setup that the governor has indicated. So uh, thank you, and thank you for welcoming here, and I look forward to building the next Amgen here. And, and, and Roderick, Roger, go ahead. Go ahead. The governor, the gov- uh, the, I think the governor can hear us now. Um, and uh, uh, just to put what Robert just said in context, where in the world could you go and find most of the top 20 pharma uh, industries in, in the world? You have Johnson & Johnson, you have Amgen, you have Pfizer, you have Medtronics, you have Boston Scientific. Uh, and, and, and on top of that, you have a vibrant aerospace industry like Honeywell, Infotech, uh, uh, Lufthansa, uh, 
in the South. I mean, it, it's a great environment for us, for me as, as a small company to have access to those companies. Like, I mean, driving around Puerto Rico is 100 miles by 35. And, and I could go to all of those companies in one day. So I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's remarkable. And I, and I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure Rod, you and, and the governor can speak a lot more about it than I can, but uh, I'm. Yeah, one, one, one area uh, of growth in Puerto Rico is the exportation of services, um, professional services, and the location in Puerto Rico, back offices, um, because we have, we can do that more um, uh, on a more cost efficient uh, basis than our counterparts in the States. Uh, in a way, I sound like a, this is like India, but kind of. But you can think of us that way. And it happens. Also, you can think of Puerto Rico as a good location to have your nerve center, to have your headquarters, regardless of where you have um, some of your operations. Because of our location, the sophistication of our institutions in Puerto Rico. And as I said, the fact that you have... Uh, all these federal laws apply and, and uh, giving you a sense of security in, in, in dealing uh, with Puerto Rico. Um, I mentioned very briefly tourism, by the way, investing in our tourism sector. I'm not talking about simply attracting tourists to Puerto Rico. Of course, we can do that. Uh, and, and once this pandemic is behind us, uh, you'll see the growth. But also investing in that sector is a good proposition. Manufacturing is a good proposition. Tourism is a good proposition. Services as well. Um, real estate, just real estate buying assets in Puerto Rico. It's, it's cheaper than anywhere in most places in, in the U.S. And there's only a growth potential there because of all this federal money is flowing into our economy that I'm telling you about. If your range is like, if you're looking at, a 10 year. I mean, we lost the governor. Uh, but but to, 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 to piggyback on what the governor said, Puerto Rico is an environment that's extraordinarily attractive for a lot of reasons. We talk a lot about the incentives environment of Puerto Rico, but in a nutshell, you've got a highly qualified workforce at a fraction of the cost of the U.S. Uh, yes, you have the most aggressive incentives in the world. You've got the sixth largest concentration of STEM of STEM professionals in the world. You've got an environment where you've got a younger average age than in the mainland at U.S. You've got great access to talent from throughout Latin America, the Caribbean, and the U.S. So it's it's a strong uh, environment. Mr. Wu, who's uh, the founding partner uh, of her races. Mr. Wu, did you have a question? Yes. Um, we consider at the moment uh, a significant investment um, in the U.S., and, and, and I consider, you know, Puerto Rico as one of the options where we might uh, put the plant, which we are planning to do. So our plan is to invest into one of the largest uh, natural glove uh, manufacturing plants worldwide. Yeah, so it's a total investment of about a billion dollars. And uh, we need about uh, 800,000 square meter workshop and so on. So we looked at the option of Puerto Rico, and uh, it, it's very attractive for us. You know, uh, the whole plant uh, it will be a high-tech plant, fully digitalized, fully automated. It's CO2 neutral. It will be the only worldwide uh, production plant at that size, which will be completely CO2 neutral. And we are creating about 800 to 900 jobs with the plant. The only concern is, you know, when we see statistically the increase of hurricanes around Puerto Rico. Yeah. And we talk with our European insurance companies and it's a headache, you know, to ensure this product, uh, this project uh, in your region. Yeah. So the insurance premiums to insure it against natural catastrophe in Puerto Rico is it's a significant, significant uh, monetary uh, or financial burden. Right, let's say it this way. So um, we also invest in other regions. For example, all our raw material, which we will take um, for this plant, we are investing in, Africa, in West Africa. So we we um, formed with farmers 
uh, collective owned companies. Uh, we formed a holding company there and we are creating all the raw material we need for our nitro glove production from there and ship it then over to the US. So it, it would be a perfect fit. The only headache we have really is, you know, these natural catastrophes. And my question is, does the government offer some kind of guarantee program or securitization? You know, we see this, as I said, in, in other regions where governments then basically issue something like a guarantee program. Uh, because for us as entrepreneurs, it is important. This plant has to run 24-7 the entire year. Yeah. Hmm. That's, a, that's a great question. I, I can answer that, but before I do, uh, I, uh, you know, or chime in, because I am the moderator in this case, uh, let me ask Governor Pierluisi, would you like to, to respond to that, to that question? Well, uh, obviously, the hurricanes and uh, earthquakes do have an impact on uh, premiums, insurance premiums in Puerto Rico. I, I don't know the details of it, but I cannot deny that that's, that that's the case. However, the, the reinsurance industry um, does business in Puerto Rico. And, um, um, and I know that uh, uh, we do, our insurance companies uh, have connections in London. Uh, for that kind of backup. Uh, and uh, American companies and international companies in, um, in the insurance field are authorized to do business in Puerto Rico. Um, so it is an area, it's interesting that you're mentioning it. I'll have to deal with it, but uh, rest assured that uh, uh, it, it, we, we will keep that in mind in attracting um, uh, businesses like yours. I, I missed part of what you said before honorable, because uh, technical yeah, reasons. Honorable governor, <laughs> honorable governor, let me explain you, you know, what we are planning is a large manufacturing base, either in the U.S. or in Puerto Rico. You know, our manufacturing base will have about 850,000 square meter workshop. Uh, and we, it will be the largest glove manufacturing plant worldwide. Yeah, there's an output of a hundred million boxes of gloves every month. Yeah, um, so we are creating roughly a thousand jobs. But we, as investor and operator of the plant, you know, we are a little bit concerned about the environment and uh, uh, and uh, you know the, the weather conditions. Yeah, because this plant, as you see, we are investing almost a billion dollars, and it has to run twenty four seven. Yeah. Yeah, let me let me say something quick, uh, Roderick, and, and then you go on and you probably have more information than I do. As I said before, our manufacturing sector kept operating even after Maria. And uh, and for a while, we, the biggest issue we faced was the power, the loss of power. And um, some of our manufacturing entities in Puerto Rico were pretty much self-sufficient energy wise. Others were not. But. To, just to give you an idea, the uh, FEMA just um, authorized the spending of $9 billion, that's a huge number for Puerto Rico, to um, basically uh, uh, improve our grid. Uh, and, and, and there's already a plan on their way to do that, to make our transmission and distribution lines more reliable so that you don't have the power cutoffs or that we faced after Hurricane Maria. Um, other than that, uh, Puerto Rico came back and, uh, and, and I tell you, uh, you, can, you can bet this uh, and Roderick can go on. I mean, our, uh, our biopharma kept producing, our addicts kept producing, um, uh, traditional uh, pharma as well. Um, and we saw it in the economic numbers. Uh, the economy went down, obviously, but it didn't go down because of our manufacturing sector. So, uh, but Roderick, if you can expand. So Thomas, let me help you. Uh, so Thomas, as, as being part of the Puerto Rico manufacturing sector, I, built, I started building Amgen in, 2000, in 1999 and finished the official construction in 2009. 
during the hurricane, during the earthquake, Amgen was up 100% of the time. So that it's, it's, it's uh, the concerns from the insurance is an engineering issue that thing could be solved. Because if you look at the, the companies who do business in the biotech world specifically and the aeronautic world, everyone was up 100% of the time. In fact, those companies were the ones that were lending help to the local communities. And I'm very proud that we did that at Amgen and I'm hoping to do that in my, in my next thing. So I think the hurricane concern is something very important to worry about, but the, that should be put into the design considerations as you invest a billion dollars that, that you're going into. So um, if you need some help, I will sit down with you and help you with that piece. So at no charge. Well, Robert, you, you, you jumped right in and that's exactly what I was getting ready to do because I knew that you'd had that experience. And, 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 uh, I would say, you know, we, there are hurricanes here, there are fires in California, there are challenges everywhere, but, Earth, but, uh, our, our research shows that Puerto Rico has a level of resiliency much higher than other places. Uh, whereas after other storms around the country, uh, and, roughly 40, and, roughly 40 to 45% of small businesses tend to close. But in the case of Puerto Rico, we found that that number tends to be uh, much more like less than 10% of businesses will close. So there's a, a level of uh, knowing how to respond to crisis in Puerto Rico. I distinguish it from, from the so Roger, sorry, sorry to bother you, but if you look at what happened in Texas, the level of preparedness that Puerto Rico has to deal with these things compared to a, a large state like Texas. Texas is pretty much paralyzed with a small, a small weather system. Uh, Maria came through Puerto Rico. Hurricanes come through Puerto Rico. I know it's not easy to recover, but you don't see the level of stagnation across the, the manufacturing and, uh, uh, and manufacturing sector in Puerto Rico. We were up and running the next day. So. Uh, I, I think it's a it's a it's a it's a testament to the preparedness component that the governor and his team have done in the in his previous jobs and continue to do. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Roger, uh, Chris, Roger, Christian, I, yeah. I, I think uh, uh, th there's a question on the chat that says, "But as a government, are there any incentives you offer?" And I think we have the two best people to talk about incentives. I mean, I have a couple of them, but you, Roderick, are the governor. Uh, maybe you can speak, you know, a summary. I know there's a lot of incentives in Puerto Rico. Maybe you guys can talk a little bit about what those incentives are. So I, I'll say this in a nutshell. Puerto Rico has the most aggressive incentives in the United States. When you're talking about the ability to not only protect, to protect, It's, we have incentives for hard to um, find workers. We have incentives for young entrepreneurs where the first half a million dollars isn't taxed. There are a variety of incentives. So uh, I would encourage folks uh, to reach out to my office directly, rmiller at investpr.org at no charge. It's our job to work with companies and help them be successful here in Puerto Rico, provide market data, uh, talent. Uh, real estate support. With that, we've got about a minute left, and I'd like to give the last minute to the governor to speak about what he sees as the biggest opportunities in Puerto Rico over the next few years. Well, actually, uh, as I said, uh, uh, Puerto Rico is, is very competitive in the area of man manufacturing, particularly sophisticated manufacturing. Um, like um, biopharma, medical devices. I didn't mention that, but and it's, it's it, that's a very strong sector of our economy. Aeronautics, technology as a whole, emerging industries. Um, then in the area of professional services, uh, also a lot of uh, growth potential, and tourism is is gonna is gonna come back strong after the pandemic. Those three sectors, I would say, are the strongest ones we can offer. And, and But most importantly, keep in mind, we are an American territory. Uh, and we are um, protected by federal laws 
and have the benefit of the certainty involved in that and the stability involved in that. And the coming years will be growth years because of all this federal funding that is about to get to Puerto Rico and that I am committed to managing well and efficiently. So uh, count on me, count on me as governor, count on my team. We're open for business. Invest Puerto Rico is ready to assist you. Uh, so uh, reach out to Roderick uh, for, with any questions and I'll be there for you. You know, this, you know, this time went so fast. We appreciate Governor uh, Pierluisi, Mr. Salcedo and Mr. Gonzalez for making time to, to have this conversation. I guarantee you come visit and you'll, you'll see what we're talking about. I think I honestly believe Puerto Rico is the most exciting economy in the Western Hemisphere, 